Critical tasks are those we undertake where, if a failure were to occur, the outcome or severity could easily result in a significant injury or loss. When carrying out these critical tasks, it's essential we identify, manage and control all hazards and risks and focus on error traps and the error prevention tools to further mitigate risks. This enables tasks to be completed in a well-planned, safe and productive manner. Your supervisor will identify the activity as a critical task during the preparation and planning phase for the work. This is part of a mandatory process which must be followed, irrespective of the critical tasks to be undertaken. It's important you understand the process and your role within it, and this module is part of the Dusan Babcock Critical Task Training for Breaking Containment. It will help reaffirm your personal awareness, accountability and ownership for these activities. Please take time to watch, listen and understand this module. It's important and it will be assessed. Breaking containment becomes a critical task activity when it is a first break into any closed system irrespective of the method used or when the risk assessment has identified a significant hazard. The operating procedure for breaking containment requires the following as a minimum before commencement of work. Preparation of a permit. A work instruction which includes a method statement for the task supported by isolation certificates and a thorough risk assessment and hazard identification process. A clearly identified and tagged flange joint. A cosh assessment to identify the previous contents of the line with control measures implemented to prevent uncontrolled spillage or exposure. Correct PPE with enhanced protection identified in the risk assessment. Check that the identified flange is the correct one. If in doubt, stop and contact your supervisor. So let's take a more detailed look at a first break into a closed system. In this example, a flanged joint. The bolts or studs at the bottom of the flange, furthest away from the eyes and body, should be slackened first. With a 12-hole flange, loosen these three bolts first, ensuring the line is product-free. If unexpected pressure is encountered or more liquid escapes than expected, re-tighten and consult your supervisor immediately. If safe to continue, re-tighten the three bolts, then follow this loosening sequence, releasing and re-tightening bolts one at a time, making sure of free movement. Each bolt head or nut must be secured on the other side by a spanner and lanyard. Make sure you communicate with colleagues to coordinate your actions. Identify and maintain a safe means of escape. Do not operate equipment unless you're both in a safe position and keep hands and fingers clear of any points of impact. And remember, the joint must be drained in a controlled manner with any liquid collected continuously in drip trays or gullies. One less than half of the bolts should then be removed with the remainder slackened. Then the joint may be cracked, but if one of the remaining studs becomes tight, this indicates stress in the pipe. If this happens, stop the job and consult your supervisor. If bolts are seized and cutting has been sanctioned, they must be replaced one at a time. If it is safe to continue, the flanges should be parted using a flange spreader or wedges. Bronze wedges should always be used and must be positioned to avoid damage to the flange face or lining. They should be secured by a lanyard where possible to prevent injury should they fly out. Never put fingers or any other part of the body between the flange faces or in the bolt holes. If the flange is being broken for spading, the bolts may be replaced with longer ones to accommodate the thickness of the spade. Remember, never leave an open spaded joint unattended. Prior to any critical task break into a closed system, a flange break operations take five must take place. No take five, no work. Those involved must sign to confirm they have read, understood and agreed to the method statement and risk assessment. In motor racing, breaking containment activities are commonplace. During development, testing and pre-race practice, engineers regularly break containment into the engine and associated systems to check the performance of the systems, 
and the components within them. The consequences of a system or component failure during a race could be extremely severe, resulting in a high-speed incident and risking the lives of the driver, spectators and trackside marshals. As such, the team have identified the error traps and error prevention tools in the braking containment process to mitigate the risk of an accident occurring. The team effectively adopt their version of focus to zero to ensure zero harm to people and zero product failures. The error traps the team identify are no different to those you'll experience when breaking containment on a Dusan Babcock facility. They all apply, and the solutions are the same. Team engineers must understand how the team works and must be inducted and orientated so they know what's expected of them. They must be trained and competent to carry out whatever task they're working on. They must plan and prepare meticulously and must adopt the behaviours the team expect in relation to the standard of work, pride and ownership, even when working under significant time constraints. There must be leadership, not just from management, but personal leadership to do the job correctly and to speak up if something's not quite right. The principles are the same, but the outcome not necessarily so. Now let's look at an example from the workplace. During a shutdown, two fitters were scheduled to carry out a routine task, breaking a tagged flange joint to a distillation column. The task, which had previously been suspended, involved installation of gaskets and an isolation blind with reinstatement of the joint later. Both were skilled and experienced personnel. The work instruction and method statement had been reviewed by the fitters prior to commencing work and these documents were supported by a risk assessment and isolation certificate provided within the work pack. The work party were at grade and the flange joint was pointed to by the SAP, but it was one of many flanges in the vicinity. The two fitters commenced the task following the correct braking containment operating procedure and the process discussed and highlighted earlier for first break of a closed system. However, unbeknown to either of them, the plant operator was in the advanced stages of commissioning the plant against the startup procedure. The temperature of the plant at that time was 300 degrees centigrade. Once the flange was partially broken, there was a release of steam whereupon the fitters immediately retightened the loose bolts and made the workplace safe before leaving to contact their supervisor. So what went wrong? And where were Dusan Babcock's breaking containment standards and expectations not met? As this job had been previously suspended, the permit should have been resubmitted and the risk assessment reviewed prior to commencement of the task with fresh isolation certificates issued. The flange should have been identified as part of the risk assessment process and not simply pointed at by the SAP. Prior to the task, a take five should have taken place. This would have highlighted concerns regarding the flange location, the validity of the permit, the risk assessment and the isolation certificate. Following the take five, the permit would have been prepared following the critical task standing instruction process and this would have identified significant change which included plant startup and pressurization of the line. The incident would have been avoided if the correct critical task process had been followed. Breaking containment is a critical task activity when it is a first break into any closed system irrespective of the method used or when the risk assessment has identified a significant hazard. And finally, remember that a take five can be called to reassess the risk at any time during the task. If other hazards are identified, stop the job and reassess. If things change, stop the job and reassess. If you're unsure, stop the job and reassess. Thanks for watching.